Well, hello everyone and welcome to this English lesson about color. We live in a very colorful world. When you look around you, you see things like green leaves on the trees. You see things like the yellow sun or the blue sky. But this lesson is not going to be a lesson about the basic colors. This isn't a lesson where I'm going to teach you the word for uh red and yellow and blue and green. I'm expecting that you know all of those things already. This is a little bit more of an advanced lesson and you'll see in a minute what I mean by that. This lesson on color uh will be a lesson where you will learn some English words and phrases uh to be able to talk about color in a more advanced way because we live in a colorful world. We have made up a lot of words and phrases that we could use to talk about color. So, let's get this lesson started. So, when you talk about color, you're actually talking about light. So, color is made either by something that emits light like the sun emits light uh, or something that reflects light or refracts light. Reflecting light is when the light hits something and bounces off. My understanding is that refracting is when light goes through something and the direction of the light can change. So, I don't know a lot about light. Um this isn't a a a scientific lesson on color but what I will say is that um there is a spectrum, a visible spectrum of colors, a visible or, or what we also call an optical spectrum. You'll notice it goes from violet to red. Violet is another word for purple and you can also find this in two forms. Sometimes the red is on the right. Sometimes the red is on the left depending on how you're talking about those colors and the light that produces them. By the way, if you go past violet, you get into ultraviolet and if you go past red, you get into infrared. So, there you go. The visible spectrum of light is what gives us the colors that we can see. You'll probably be familiar with a rainbow. A rainbow is a phenomenon, a natural phenomenon whereby light is broken up. White light is broken up into its different wavelengths and then we see those colors. A rainbow is a very cool thing to see. It happens when light goes through raindrops and that light is then broken up and you can see each individual color in the rainbow. Um there is a little bit of a um a myth around rainbows that there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow that if you could get to the end of the rainbow where it touches the ground, you would see all those beautiful colors and then there would be a pot of gold there but it's kind of impossible because The closer you get to a rainbow, the more those that rainbow of colors moves away from you. You can't actually get to the end of the rainbow. We have something called a prism which is something made out of glass or other clear material and what a prism does is when light goes into a prism, it does the same thing as what the raindrop is doing. The light refracts and it separates into its individual colors or scientifically, its wavelengths. So, you'll see here there is a prism. A uh, very famous rock band made an album that had this on the cover. If you can guess in the chat, um I'll give you a cookie. No, sorry. There's no there's no prize for guessing that one. But a prism is a really cool um like a, a an object made out of glass or acrylic or another transparent material in the shape of a triangle. When light goes through, it breaks up into its individual colors or individual wavelengths. We have something called a color palette. So, a color palette can mean a couple of different things. The most common use is in the world of design. If you decided you wanted a web page made, you would go to a design company and they would say, what's your color palette? And you would tell them what colors you normally use when you design things. You'll notice on my YouTube channel, I use white and orange and black. So, my color palette is very, very limited. If you look at a Google logo though, you'll see that they use almost all the colors in the rainbow. So, they have a very broad color palette. So, when you design something like a web page, you can even use a color palette to design a room in a house. You might paint one wall one color and another wall a different color. 
and you might buy curtains that are another color and all of the colors work together. So, you choose a color palette where the colors look really, really cool together. I see Stacy in the chat saying it's Pink Floyd. There we go. There's something called a color wheel as well. A color wheel is something used in design to help choose colors. The color wheel has colors in the same order as the visible spectrum and it allows you to choose colors that are close to each other on the color wheel or opposite each other depending on how you're trying to design something. So, if I wanted to design something with you know two different shades of purple, I could use violet and red violet. If I wanted a couple different shades of orange, I could use red orange and orange. So, you'll see here the color wheel shows you two different kinds of colors, warm colors and cool colors. I should pause and let you know one thing. You'll notice that I spell color with the letter U but in some situations, you will see it without the U. In Canada, we spell color with the letter U. In the United States, they spell color with no U. Canadians tend to use both versions of it. The most correct version for us has a U in it but we when we see color without a U, without a U, it doesn't bother us too much unless I'm grading a student paper. Then I put a little red X there and mark it as a, a spelling mistake. We also have something called a paint swatch. When you are deciding to paint a room in your house, maybe you don't like the current color. You painted it 10 years ago when that color was in fashion, when that color was very um cool and everybody was using it and now maybe you've decided to repaint a room. You would go to a hardware store and ask for some paint swatches. Paint swatches show you all the different um versions or variations of different colors. So, you would take that home and maybe hold it up to the wall and then decide on which color from the paint swatch you think would work the best. Um sometimes though, when you pick a color from the paint swatch and then when you actually paint the whole room in that color, it can look a little bit different because that's just the nature of light and color. Sometimes a color from a paint swatch, uh when you put it on the whole wall, it looks just a little bit different. So, we have um two different ways to describe colors. We have primary colors. So, generally, um the primary colors are considered to be red, yellow and blue. Now, that has changed a little bit because of computers. You'll hear terms like RGB monitor which stands for red, green, blue but I think that's because the technology limited their ability to create yellow. So, generally, the primary colors are considered to be red, yellow and blue. And what do you think happens when you mix primary colors? You get secondary colors. So, you'll see the same drawing here where the red and yellow mix together, you get orange. Where the red and blue mix together, you get purple and where the blue and yellow mix together, you get green. I hope I said that all right. If not, you can see the chart beside me uh, and you can see how uh, primary colors when mixed together will make secondary colors. We also have words like tinge or hint or touch. So, someone might paint the wall in their house white but it might have a tinge of blue in it. It might have a hint of blue in it. It might have a touch of blue in it. Someone might buy a white t-shirt and then after they wash it with other clothes like a brand new pair of blue jeans, it might end up having a tinge of blue or a hint of blue in it because the dye from the jeans went into the t-shirt. So, a tinge or hint or touch is when you talk about usually the color white but when you can see a little bit of another color in it. By the way, I'm going to talk about black and white as colors. There's a big argument in the world whether black is a color or just the complete absence of color or whether white is a color or if it's just all the colors mixed together. I call black and white colors. Uh, at least for this English lesson, I'm going to. So, you can describe colors in a lot of different ways. You can say that um oh, that person wears a lot of dark colors or he usually buys cars that are a dark color. A dark color would be any of these kinds of colors. Colors like 
a dark blue or a dark gray or a dark brown. So, when you add the word dark, you mean you know kind of this somber dark look I guess is what I wanted to say. They're not black but they're certainly not very colorful or bright, okay? So, you can have a dark red or a dark green. Um when I buy a van, I usually get a normal red but I could buy a dark red van if I wanted to. So, that would be red that's a little less red with a little more black in it. Hopefully, that made sense. We also have bright colors. Some people like to dress in dark colors. Some people like to dress in bright colors. They buy things that are maybe neon or things that are reflective or things where the colors themselves are just very, very bright. You can see the orange and the yellow and the green and the blue in here. They're just giving off lots of color. It's very, very bright. It's the opposite of dark, okay? These are definitely not dark colors here. These are definitely bright colors. We also have the word vibrant. When something is vibrant, it means it has a mix of colors and it's very similar to bright. You could almost use these words interchangeably like he always wears very vibrant colors. Lots of bright blue and bright yellow and bright pink. So, I'm actually using the word bright to talk about vibrant but definitely um Sometimes people dress in different ways and some people like wearing very bright or vibrant colors and some people prefer dark colors. We also would call these muted tones, okay? When some when you mute the sound, you can't hear it. You can also use that word to talk about these colors. You could say they're muted tones and some people uh, like dull colors or sometimes if you look here at night, as the sun goes down, it becomes harder to see the colors around you and we would say that there's very dull colors. You can see here these buildings are kind of a brown, a little bit of gray. Um there's just nothing popping out. So, we would certainly describe that as um there are a lot of dull colors. Like, oh, that part of town's not very nice. All the buildings are painted with really dull colors. They're just just not interesting. And we have the word colorful. So, this parrot is colorful. Um when someone dresses in a colorful way or when I do a lesson like this, this is a very colorful lesson. It means you're going to see a lot of different colors, okay? Um a lot of people right now are decorating outside of their houses for Christmas and they put up a lot of lights and it's a very colorful display of lights. There is definitely um probably in about two weeks, there will be more but if you drive around right now, uh, it's a very colorful trip around the neighborhood. There are a lot of Christmas lights, a lot of colorful Christmas lights. So, there are a lot of different ways to make things colorful. Um paint is probably the most common. I'm not sure when paint was invented but if you don't like the color of a room, you can paint it. If you don't like the color of your car, you can paint it. So, paint works as a verb and as a noun. I'm going to buy paint because I want to paint my car. So, there I used it as a noun. I'm going to buy paint because I want to paint my car. In order to paint, you need things like paint and you need a paintbrush and other things but certainly um painting is one of the quickest ways and cheapest ways to make something look good again. If you have a room in your house and you don't like the way it looks, the cheapest and best thing you could do is to put on a fresh coat of paint. So, a fresh coat of paint is a phrase uh that we use to talk about painting something. You might walk into a room and say, wow, this room needs a fresh coat of paint. If it's been like 20 years since the room's been painted, maybe the paint is flaking off the wall and the colors have become kind of dull. So, I'm using the word dull there. You might say, hey, we should pick out a bright color because this room needs a fresh coat of paint. We need to liven it up a bit with a fresh coat of paint. And then there's also something called matching colors. So, people sometimes just wear clothes that are colorful but sometimes they wear clothes where they've specifically chosen the colors so that they match. In Canada in the winter, people very often will have a scarf, a winter hat which we call a toque and a pair of gloves where the colors all match. They will purposefully buy them to be all the same color. 
Sometimes that color is black. Remember I said I was gonna say black is a color. So, I myself actually have a gray winter hat and I have gray winter gloves. I actually bought new ones. They say Canada on them. I should wear them someday. But it is very common for people not just in uh countries where there's winter but it's very common for people uh to buy clothing where the colors match. Um and uh definitely in winter in Canada, you will see a lot of people walking around wearing things that match where the colors match. Sometimes in order to organize things, you will color code things. When something is color coded, it means that you've chosen different colors to mean different things. Most of you I think would have done this when you were students or maybe you're doing it now as a student. Maybe you have a binder with papers in it and you have a divider and red means science class and green means French class or English class and yellow means uh science class. We as human beings love to organize and one of the best ways to organize is to color code things. My sister actually works in an office at a hospital and they keep all of everyone's health records and they are color coded. So, when they look at the wall, they can see I think blue is people age 65 and older and then green is people from age 50 to 64. So, they have everything color coded so that very quickly they can see and pick out what they need to do. Um you can see here this binder. It has marketing, promotion, sales, territories, goals. So, this is for a business and in each of those color coded sections, you would put though that information and the colors just help you very quickly see it or find it. Sorry. Everyone usually has a favorite color. Maybe I shouldn't say everyone has a favorite color. Most people have a favorite color. My favorite color is orange which might seem strange because I wear blue a lot but if I was to if someone said, Bob, what's your favorite color? I would say my favorite color is orange. My favorite color has been orange for a very, very long time. Um I picked the color orange when I was in grade school. Um when people were saying what their favorite color was, no one was saying orange so I picked orange. Um it's not because my parents came from Holland. By the way, orange is the color of most sports teams from Holland or from the Netherlands but uh, definitely my favorite color is orange. You should be ready to answer this question as an English learner. There are going to be times where you'll have a conversation. You'll be practicing your English and someone will say, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite season? What's your favorite food? What's your favorite kind of music? So, what is your favorite color? You should be ready to answer that and give a reason why. Um there's something called watercolors. So, when you um are someone who likes to paint, someone who likes to get a paintbrush and a canvas and use paint in order to paint, sometimes you paint using watercolors. Let me make this bigger. Watercolors usually have a softer look to them. So, it's paint that you mix with water and then you paint on your canvas. So, a lot of times kids will do watercolor painting when they're learning how to paint in school because it's one of the easiest kinds of paint to use. The colors are not quite as bright as you might want them but it's very easy to clean up when you are done. Uh we also have something called food coloring. Um food coloring is something that you use to give food color. Sometimes food will naturally have a color. If you eat spinach, uh it is green. If you eat watermelon, it is pink. But sometimes in the cooking or baking process, they will add food coloring. When you buy a uh, cereal at the grocery store, it might have some food coloring in it to make it look a certain color. I'm not a big fan of food coloring. I would rather just eat my food uh when it's its normal color but humans like certain colors and so they have started to use food coloring or they started to use food coloring many years ago to give food different colors. And there's something in the world called dyes. Dyes are different things you can use to create color in something that doesn't have it. So, if you have a piece of fabric that's white, 
you can buy dye in order to change the color of the fabric. Dyes are made from all kinds of different things. Sometimes there's a natural source for the dye. Sometimes they've just found a chemical that will dye something a certain color. But when you have a white t-shirt, probably the most common type of dye is or dyeing is called tie dyeing where you tie the t-shirt in knots and then you dye different parts of it different colors and then when you uh untangle the t-shirt, it looks really cool. That was very popular in the early 70s or in the 1970s. People would tie dye their shirts. When something doesn't have color, we say that it's colorless. Water is colorless. It does not really have a color. You can see right through water. Um so, when something has a lot of color, it's colorful. When something is a specific color, you say it is that color. My tractor is green. My van is red. But when something has no color, you say it's colorless. You would say um air, I guess, is colorless. You can't actually see it. Water is colorless. So, when something has no color, when there's the complete absence of color, we would say that it is colorless. Black and white. So, when you take pictures, you can take pictures in color or you can take pictures in black and white. Um so, generally, when I take pictures, I take pictures in color. I like color photographs. Um uh black and white is when you take a picture and the only two colors present are black and white. So, you can see it adds this really cool look to it. A long time ago, when you watched television or went to a movie, the movie or a TV show was in black and white because they hadn't invented color yet. Um I used to have a black and white television when I was a kid. There was color television available but a black and white television was cheaper and so, my parents bought me a black and white television. Um I was happy when I eventually got a color television. Um so, black and white would be any photograph or TV show where there is no color. That's how you would describe it. We have colors too that we call pastels. Right now in the flower world, people really like colors that we would call pastels. A pastel color is not very bright. It almost looks a bit like a watercolor. It's a little washed out. So, right now, people really like pastels like very light blues and light greens and light yellows and light pinks and light purples where there's just a little bit. It's more than a tinge, okay? So, if you look at these blue shoes, there's more than just a hint of blue but there's not a lot of blue in it. They're kind of, it's a mixture of blue and white. So, pastels, very interesting. When I eat um what are they called? Macarons. They're usually all different colors that are I would say are pastel colors. We also have something called infrared. Uh infrared is outside of the visible spectrum. It's outside of the optical spectrum past red and it's a way where if you have special equipment, you can actually see uh that non-visible light. So, I don't know a lot about infrared but sometimes I think they use infrared to see in the dark. Um remember this isn't a science lesson but uh I think that's what they use infrared for. It sees heat I think. We have something too where some people are colorblind. I am a tiny bit colorblind in the sense that black and dark blue look very similar to me. I can't really tell the difference between navy blue or dark blue and black. This is a test for color blindness. I see the number 74. Some of you might see a different number in this because you are a little bit color blind. Maybe your blues and greens look the same. There's all different versions of color blindness usually around uh two different colors that you see differently or you see as the same. Um sometimes in my computer class when we're doing design work, I will realize that a student is colorblind because when I see what they're making, the colors don't really match up and you can then usually I say, oh, um are you a little bit colorblind? You won't lose points uh in my class designing something if you are a little bit colorblind. We have something called paint by number. Let me make this a bit bigger. Sometimes people are really good at painting 
And then there's people like me that aren't. If I wanted to paint, I could buy something called paint by number. And what that means is that there are different spots on the canvas and there will be a number there and if it says number 11, it I can check a chart and it says 11, um, you know, dark green and then I know that in that box, I have to paint dark green. So, it's something that kids do uh more than adults but definitely paint by number is something I remember doing as a kid. It was a lot of fun. Um it's a great way to do some painting if you're not good at painting. So, the number tells you what color to use. Also, when I was a kid, I had something called a coloring book. I had many coloring books actually and I would take my colored pencils or pencil crayons or crayons and I would color. I would color in the little boxes using Brent's phrasal verb there. So, when you color in the different spots, eventually, you're done that page in the coloring book. There are now coloring books for older people. It can be very relaxing. I think this is actually an adult coloring book. A coloring book where um it's a little more intricate and more difficult than a children's book. Um but definitely uh when I was a kid, most of my coloring books were like Batman or Superman and those types of characters. Um every year, different companies announce the color of the year. So, every year, there's a new color announced and that's the color of the year. People use the color of the year to decide how to paint rooms in a house or a new building. They use it to decide what color flowers they want at a wedding. Sometimes, people just ignore the color of the year but this year, um I think this is from Pantone. The color of the year for 2022 for the year coming up is October mist. It's not a very bright color. It's quite it's a very dull color. Um I'm not super excited for this. Um I think that this might be a nice color uh to paint an office if you're painting an office wall. It's not a nice color for wedding flowers but that is uh the color of the year for 2022. We'll see what that means for flowers. Um there is a phrase, one phrase I did think of with the word color in it and it's the phrase to pass with flying colors. When you take a test and if you get 97 out of 100 or 100 out of 100, we might say that you passed with flying colors. You didn't just succeed. You did really, really well on the test. So, we would say that you passed with flying colors. And we had this question a couple of times. Uh people were asking about eye color. Everyone has um there's quite a variety of eye colors in the world. As I said, my eyes are kind of a blue green. Uh Jen's eyes are a little more green. Um one of my kids has brown eyes. One of my kids has the same color eyes as me. There are many, many different colors uh, of eye in the world um and we refer to that as eye color. So, a lot of times like if you um are when you go for your driver's license in Canada, uh you have to specify what your eye color is when you fill out the application so that they can um identify you if they need to. So, I always write blue. I don't write blue green but maybe I should. Anyways, eye color is the term you use to refer to the color of your eyes. <laughs> 